What's going on, friends? Sam Pritt is back once again. I'm back in the UK for a relatively short amount of time. But of course, when you go away, boxes do start to appear. So um, without further ado, let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. This channel is sponsored by Polymaker and PCBWay, the best choice in filament and PCB manufacturing. Explore PCBWay's 3D printing portal. Easily upload your STL file and choose from a spectrum of exotic filaments for that special project. From PCBs to 3D prints, trust PCBWay.com for your unmatched quality and innovation. Visit them today at PCBWay.com. Now this is something new and exciting from the origins of Anchormake, now rebranded as Ufi Makes. They're stepping into fresh territory with this innovative UV printer, the E1, which is being pitched as the world's first personal UV printer. Unlike traditional industrial UV printers, the E1 is designed to be compact, affordable and accessible, perfect for makers, small businesses and creative professionals. Ufi is bringing this technology into the desktop market, offering a solution that delivers uncompromising performance and cutting edge features not typically seen on consumer level UV printers. I really hope I'm saying it right. Ufi? Ufi? Let's go with Ufi. Either way, the E1 is launching on Kickstarter. And regardless on how you feel about Kickstarters, there is an exclusive 30% off early bird offer. As always though, it is important to consider the typical risks associated with crowdfunding platforms. Ufi, of course, is an established brand with cameras, video doorbells, vacuum cleaners, and robot lawnmowers. And well, Ufi, if you're watching, lawnmowers. Send me some, send me some. Getting inside the box and, well, unboxing, typically we find everything that you'd expect to get started. The main print unit, a full set of inks, various accessories, and in this case, and to be quite honest with you, I don't know if this is standard, literally everything that I could have asked for in the form of stickers, cups, frames, canvases, and bottles to get this game started. To be completely honest, I agree to take this machine on because it's just not another generic 3D printer. However, Anchor, now Ufi Make, have had some genuinely interesting ideas in the past, and the machines that did make it to the market were fast, reliable, and user-friendly. This shot is just to show off the power connector. Looks like an on-off switch and also an ethernet connector, which is hidden the back of this or the side of this. The setup of this system so far has been flawless. The system does spend around 15 minutes purging the inks and then after a few sanity checks I did try and shut the door as I wasn't really sure if I should just leave it open. Maybe? However, you're going to have to leave it open to install the huge A3 bed and consider the amount of space needed similarly to a bed slinger style 3D printer as the space at the front and the rear will need a clear path to print. So this is the uh, A3 flatbed here. Uh, it's a sort of sticky, it's got a kind of stickiness to it. You can feel it. Um, it's not gonna move, which is quite interesting. So if you put something on there, not gonna move easily. It's got a bit of stickiness to it. So the setup process took around about 20 minutes to fully complete. Then I moved into setting up the first print, which was printing onto a magnet. This was inside of the box, not from the external box of goodies. And inside of the app, I took a picture of a cat and 17 minutes later, well, it was done. It's pretty impressive. Next, I took a picture of Caleb. And in the app, I used the Ufi's AI platform to manage the image. Not only was this set up to a maximum of five millimeters, but it also made him look super awesome. And you heard me right, that's five millimeters in height. So the way that this works is that you can basically 3D print on top of layer upon layer, but also in resin. So you can get that five millimeters of 3D imagery that you can touch and feel. And well, it's blowing my mind. Now the E1 has really taken its time to reach the general public and I think, well, that's probably intentional. And it really feels like they focused on delivering a solid, well thought out product rather than just rushing it out. So the E1 does have a compact footprint of 520 by 420 by 360. So it's easy to transport, ideal for taking to trade shows or even workshops. Now, despite its portable size, it does support a maximum print area of A3, which is 420 by 300, which is pretty impressive. In fact, it boasts four times the print area of the Roland DB8, a machine that retails for over $10,000. Now, the E1 will be ranging between $1,500 and $3,000, depending on the discounts and, well, whether or not you go with that kick. 
Kickstarter. Now the E1 is a three-in-one UV printer, which will allow you to pretty much print on any surface, depending on which module you use. And well, there's kind of four modes. The first is a modular print bed, which is kind of the slim version of the print bed where you can close the sides up. There is a UV flat bread printer. Flat bed is what I meant to say there. And that's actually being used at the moment. That's the A3 size. And this is the slim one. Look at that beautiful and then finally the roll to film style module as well which um kind of scares me a little bit we'll come on to that later though so just to be clear and in some cases you can build up the processing ink up to five millimeters for embossing logos or images giving it that true 3d texture now that works for certainly anything that's flat not flatbread just flat if you're doing a tumbler though, that will go to a maximum of one millimeter. So the Ufi Make software also has some built-in AI compatibility, which will aid you in the design process, adding to your design flair should you want to. Now that's done on a credit system, so make sure you check out that app. Hopefully that's available by the time you're watching this video and understand a little bit more about what you're buying and how those credits work. So at the time of filming, I have been using the beta version of the Ufi Make software on my iPhone. Now much like previous iterations of products that I've installed before, it was very easy and simple to use. So if you did ever use the Anchor Make 3D printers and you use this kind of app before, well, it's basically the same platform, but it's just built upon it. Um, very easy to use, plenty of different things that you can get yourself printing or getting involved with or even modifying and changing. So if you were looking to maybe set this up as a shop and start creating, it's a business in a box. That's the, that's the upshot to this. It's all ready to go. But again, just get your head around the credit system because for some AI generation, obviously it takes processing power and somebody's ultimately got to pay for that. Now they preloaded a load of credits on there for me to do all this kind of stuff, which is very kind of them. So thanks very much for getting that done. But it does intrigue me a little bit on how much these credits are going to cost. So let's talk about quality. Now the prints out of this unit have been, no exaggeration, mind blowing. Now I'm not entirely sure that I really understood how good this would be, especially when you consider the technology involved with laser leveling, system monitoring, AI and app development, and that really sets it apart from anything else, and certainly anything else that I've ever seen. For those creatives out there, well this is an untapped resource, which is quick and easy to use. We produced a ton of different things during the tests, and the only failure was down to the fact that I was not scanning the flat bed first prior to the print. Now, I do think that the E1 has a lot of possibilities, and the only restriction here is really going to be that the resin and resin cartridges are locked into the EFI ecosystem. Having said that, the prices on replenishments have already been published online. So if you're watching this thinking, well, could I produce my artistic idea for X? Well, calculating the overall cost association will be important along with how much resin stroke ink will be used on the project. This is true, and again, we are going to be tied into their ecosystem inside an app or also on your desktop. Now, the costs are displayed above here, and well, to be honest with you, it's an affordable makerspace or custom craft business all inside of one box. And although I was sent this unit and the base cost of the E1, well, to be honest with you, I think are actually pretty reasonable overall. And of course, if you're backing the Kickstarter, well, you'll save another 30%. Nice. So let's talk about the unit itself. Well, it's a sleek design, but due to its resin enclosure, well, it does also need cleaning. Now, the best news about this is that it is a self-cleaning system. It has a self-cleaning tank, and so far, I've not really had to do any real work to keep it maintained. The Jet Clean system manages the whole cleaning process from basic cleaning to deep cleaning. Now, during this time, which I've had basically for two weeks, I've left the machine plugged in so it can agitate the process when it sees fit. Now, during the print process, and despite the filtration system, it does have a slight smell into the room. And although this isn't that unpleasant for me, well, it might be for you. And also, while I'm on that, you might want this unit to be banished out of earshot. One thing that I have noticed as well, that the room temperature in the studio also sits around 25 to 35 degrees. And depending on how many printers are on at the time, well, the airflow isn't great inside of this room. So keeping the door closed, well, I experienced an error with the E1 around cooling. So if you're going to be putting this inside of a room where potentially there might be a bedroom next door. Well, something to consider there because this thing does agitate. It does make some noises. Nothing crazy. It's not like a 3D printer, but it does make some gurgling kind of wandering noises. So I probably wouldn't want to have this into a bedroom or next to a bedroom. And again, this room gets quite stuffy, especially when there's printers on. So thoughts around potentially keeping it in a relatively open space might be good for the overall process. So let's talk about the Kickstarter and then we'll move on to showing you some of the fabulous prints 
comments and my final thoughts. Now, again, this will launch on Kickstarter on the 29th of April and will end on the 8th of June. This video is actually scheduled to come out on the 1st of May. So if you're watching it now, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The shipping will start in July and it will also then go on general sale from July as well, but with that increased price. Now, I can assume that the reason that they're using the Kickstarter model is mainly for marketing purposes, but personally, I can't see really any issues with this machine and it's certainly having it for the past couple of weeks really this being a high risk launch so if you're interested in this printer and printing over 300 materials including wood acrylic metal leather glass rock ceramics or even 3d printed plastic well the e1 certainly scores top marks from me so is the E1 for you? And well, to be honest with you, if you look at the cost of the unit versus the potential return on investment here and from custom designs, which are usually a much higher price to set up and purchase, well, the cost teams with your ability to be able to be creative. And if you have the energy, well, Ufi has you covered. There is a uniqueness to this product and certainly with the laser alignment, snapshot camera and the case of the rotary tool, auto bed leveling and also a ton of tech, well, it makes the whole experience really easy. When I say easy, well, that's certainly for the most part. This unit, which is their laminating machine, is particularly tricky to use. And I'll circle back right at the end of the video to sort of talk about how that works and how you're supposed to use this properly. But seriously, overall, there hasn't really been any major issues. Maybe a few setup problems, etc., etc. But nothing that's been massive and it's been a breeze to use actually at the moment we're printing this really cool piece of artwork um for my mother-in-law she's got a puppy um we've just had puppies so she's now got a puppy it's weird um but we've taken that image and we've done this artistic kind of brush stroke effect to it and um well we'll show you that first but all of the prints that i've done so far they haven't failed to impress me in one way, shape or form, especially when we get onto the tumblers and how that laser aligns. It's absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, check these prints out and we'll come back to the laminating machine and a few other little issues that we've had. But overall, this has just been insane. So these are my final thoughts and well, not to repeat myself, but this machine is a total boss. It's not quite a 3D printer, but it's certainly more than just a 2D printer, but it can't be understated on how good this thing is at creating high quality custom prints on stuff. I can see and understand that Yuffie's decision not to produce another 3D printer doing multicolor and instead really putting out an exciting product that truly is a business in a box. Now, having said that, of course, and certainly inside of this particular room, it's going to have to be moved out to a better ventilated space overall because it's far too stuffy in here and I can't keep having those errors. And again, the smell is beginning now to slightly get to me. A couple of things that I did learn along the way is don't try and remove the top cover mid print to get a great shot of the print head moving backwards and forwards because it will kill the print. Whereas removing this particular part is part of a safety feature. 
you'll have to learn to trust the process. Countless times I kept looking in to try and see what was going on and trying to figure out if I could get a better view of the machine to show you on this particular video. And by doing that, well, unfortunately, it was futile. We're dealing with UV exposure, which is of course bad for your eyes. Hence why you can't really see what's going on. And that camera feature, well, that only really takes a snapshot of the print bed so you can size your images up to the material below. But you will have to learn to trust the process as for this entire time, it has been amazing. And what's been produced has, well, just been incredible. Of course, there's lots of amazings and incredibles and phenomenals inside of this video. But of course, with so much panic, there is very little disco. So what about that DVT unit? Well, you don't know what you don't know. And well, we just didn't know. The DVT unit, which stands for direct to film, allows you to create stickers or transfer images that can be directly stuck to stuff. We had a few problems getting it going, and to be honest, the information on how to use this was a little tricky to find. Again, printing onto transfer paper, which was a little tricky to find out exactly how to print onto, well, was a lesson learned inside of itself. Well, I think that's about it, friends. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, please make sure you like and subscribe. Hopefully more content like this will be coming in the near future. Make sure you check out that amazing Kickstarter at $14.99. Let me know in the comments what you think about this machine, what you think about this video, and, well, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master work.